Hey guys, Death's Loader Magic here. Still got a little bit of a sore throat from uh, inhaling all those quality ashes plus allergies, but uh, Wizards is here to brighten up everybody's Monday over and over and over again because it seems like every Monday they are banning something. Personally, I don't care about Mondays. I work from home. But good news, it's time for the historic ban and restricted announcement. The bad news is, how can one company be this stupid? I mean, how? How is it possible? Like, literally, zero members of the community were on their side on March 9th when they unbanned this card. Everybody was like, what are you thinking? Is it now somehow an interactive card and not a land? No. So in case you didn't catch on, uh, let me just read the announcement. It's one paragraph, basically. Field of the Dead has been a powerful force in historic for much of the format's life. Really? Well, you didn't think that last time you unbanned it. Uh, while its overall win rate is rarely at the top, eh, I don't know if that's true. Its matchups are extremely polarized. <laughs> In particular, its high win rate against slower decks, oh yes, has made the format as a whole lean more towards aggressive strategies. While that and Goblin Tribal just auto-winning on turn 4, in my opinion that's the main motivator because people like to win. But yeah, if you're going to do a mid-range or slower deck that kind of gradually builds up to something or just gets worse and worse over time, you do live in fear of the Field of the Dead because there's nothing you can do to stop it. Nothing. I mean, oh, land destruction. Great. By mid-game, they usually have two Field of the Deads, just FYI. And you're never going to win when it's four of their Field of the Deads in the deck versus four of your land destructions, unless you pack it with eight, and then there isn't room in every deck for eight land destructions. There isn't even, like, land destruction in every color. Well, except for the colorless land, but it's like, who wants to run a colorless land in, like, a three-color deck where your colors are super tight? So, I don't think people should have to be forced to play around it. That's what I've said about basically everything that they've ever banned. So they say this effort uh, scales with the ubiquity of Field of the Dead decks. Yeah, you can run it in anything. I mean, it's not color dependent. You gotta watch that colorless crap. It, it can go in anything. I don't know if they realize that or not. Shadow Spear, Stone Coil Serpent, Smuggler's Copter. Remember that gem? Also, here's their excuse. They say recent sets have given the deck several powerful additions, including Cultivate, Explore, and most recently, Hour of Promise. So I'd say, what's the problem, Field of the Dead, or way too much land coming out of the library straight into play? That's a trick question, the answer is both. As a result of this, we have seen both popularity and win rate of Field of the Dead decks steadily climb. And it is currently one of the most played best of one decks, and by far the most popular best of three deck. Wait a minute! Rewind the tape for a second, didn't they just say, Well, its overall win rate is rarely at the top. Fast forward! It's currently the most played best of one deck and by far the most popular best of three deck. Oh, I guess everybody's playing it because it doesn't win. I told you that was bullshit. Having watched the progress of this deck closely, we feel that this trend is unlikely to change. We also feel that Field of the Dead is unlikely to be a healthy part of the format anytime soon. Really, that's, I think, exactly what you said when you first banned it. Uh, so suspension is the wrong approach. Wait a minute. I thought you said you didn't ever directly ban things. You always suspended them first. I wanted you to leave us in, uh, suspense, I guess, no pun intended, to see if you'd unban it again in two months. But nope, they're going straight for the throat. By the way, go for the throat. Fantastic underappreciated modern card. In order to bring greater balance to the force, oh wait, I misread that, greater diversity to the historic meta, Field of the Dead is banned. End of article. So, you might be asking yourself, why the hell did they bring this back? We all knew it was a toxic card, you can't interact with it in any way with almost any card, and all the board wipes in the world won't save you from a go-wide token strategy. Did that sentence just come out of my mouth? I just named how you beat go-wide token flood decks. But they just keep coming because you can't get rid of the source. Kind of like that stupid turn all your tokens into angels bullshit card that I'm sick to my ass of. At least that card could be destroyed with any naturalized effect in green and any exile effect in white and a bunch of other stuff. Field of the Dead, once it's out, you can't stop it. And what are you going to do? Counterspell their Cultivate? Counterspell their Hour of Promise? I doubt it. Even then, you're just shooting the problem down the road and it's going to come back to bite you in a couple turns. There's, you can't stop this card. There's nothing you can do. It's just they drop it in and oh, I, I guess I lose. So why the hell did they bring it back? Well, March 9th, 2020. Let's read why the hell they brought it back. Now remember, in this announcement, um, Oko, Veil of Summer, and Once Upon a Time were completely banned from Historic, and then they decided to unban Field of the Dead, and the internet lost their shit. 
So they said, in the case of Field of the Dead, don't worry, everybody, we're introducing some new answers with Historic Anthology 2. And they printed like two or three red land destruction because we needed land destruction in the game, the most annoying archetype ever. I'd rather go up against a mill deck than an is it deck where it keeps resurrecting a spell every turn to blow up one of my lands. Because honestly, I will get violent with people who try and play that. I'm going to throw some furniture. Blowing up my lands is like harming John Wick's dog, okay? I, I don't accept that. I need my lands. I like my lands. I need to use my lands to play literally anything in my deck. So you start screwing with my lands, it's time to go to fists. So fast forward, how did that go for you, wizards? Did that solve it? Did everybody add eight land removal cards to their deck for no reason and switch to mix red? No, they didn't, did they? <laughs> Whoopsies. People don't want problems and then answers because then they have to run the answers. Also, people in best of one really don't want answers because they really don't have a sideboard. And people who do have a sideboard in best of three really don't want to waste room in it and really don't want to lose the first match to one card and then try to win out by maybe pulling a card that maybe deals with that one card and then having to deal with the rest of the deck, which is usually like Teferi and Ugin at the time. So they said, yeah, Ghost Quarter and Goblin Rune Blaster. These will absolutely solve the problem. We're optimistic that we can reintroduce Field of the Dead without decks that use it being dominant. You morons. Like I alluded to at the beginning, how can human beings be this stupid and then how can human beings be this stupid compared to like the random community of anybody anywhere on any social media who had immense backlash over this because we knew better considering this is the wizards of the coast staff full-time job they study the game eight hours a day they're looking at like math and numbers and stats and they're like no in my immense experience of multiple decades at wizards of the coast it'll be okay to bring field of the dead back because we printed answers uh, this is historic, not vintage, okay? Nobody gives a shit about answers, and nobody's going to play them. So they banned it for the same reasons they're banning it now, then they unbanned it, and now they're rebanning it, and they're blaming it on Cultivate Explorer and Hour of Promise. Yeah, because the deck wouldn't have gotten there eventually, and there was no other way to do it, and it totally wasn't playable or the dominant unbeatable deck before Cultivate Explorer and Hour of Promise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bullshit, you're blaming them. So the whole, we didn't make a mistake, three more land fetchers came out. No, no, shut the hell up. I just counted. There are two sentences in the entire ban announcement paragraph that aren't lies. At least they eventually recognize that it's such a toxic card. Like they said, it's unlikely to be a healthy part of the format anytime soon because you can't interact with it and can't stop it. And it's just going to be a problem over and over and over. Get rid of it for good. What they should have done is never unbanned it. So let me just talk again about uh, uh, unbanning anything ever. Like, especially in Modern and Legacy, they've tried unbanning things, and um, once in a great while it works, but almost always it's like, oh, good, this garbage is back, and then people have to deal with it basically forever because they're too, you know, stuck up and proud and they're egotistical to uh, go back on their decisions. Like, this time they blamed it on three cards, which is bullshit. They made the mistake. If they don't have a scapegoat or some kind of, you know, shaky lie that they can put behind it, they will not go back on their decision because it'll make them look wrong. One of the staff members, I don't actually remember who had like said that. They said one of the reasons it takes so long to make ban decisions is because they don't want to be wrong and then be seen to go back on it because then it'll make them look bad. So here's the math and, and logic behind unbanning anything ever. In my opinion, nothing should ever be unbanned under any circumstances. Even when it looks really obvious that you should, it never should be done. Unless the ban decision was wrong. I mean, I will say... And the, the funny thing is, they never did this. When they banned Emrakul, but the real problem was free casting Emrakul, the real problem was Aetherworks Marvel. When they actually got around to admitting it and banning Aetherworks Marvel, when everybody just summoned the next Titan over, like literally that's what they did, they could very well have unbanned Emrakul, and to my memory, they didn't do it. Because, like, the original ban was a mistake. But they left it out because they were like, well, Emrakul's such a toxic, annoying card. If anybody managed to play it, it's going to ruin that game anyway, so we might as well just leave it out. But their original premise was wrong, so they just realized, okay, all the Eldrazi were a problem. They ruined modern. People hate the Eldrazi. Let's just leave it banned. So in the case of a genuine mistake, I would say, yeah, they could bring it back. But other than that, if it was banned for a good reason, even 10 years ago, don't bring it back. That's why Stoneforge Mystic really pissed me off. I haven't paid attention to Modern. I've been told that that card didn't take back off. But the thing is, it could have, and nobody wanted to play against that deck ever again because it was horrible. That's why the card was banned. 
So here's the number one point that me and Wizards seem to disagree on, though they've been changing their tune lately. I care about fun and enjoyability and fair gameplay above all else. Yes, I care about deck diversity. It gets really boring in a format when people only play two decks. That's purely a power level thing. Okay, ban stuff, whatever. Stop printing overpowered garbage in the first place. That That's its own little fix. Okay, whatever. All Wizards cares about is deck diversity in the format. They don't care how toxic the decks are. They don't care how hated the decks or the cards or the archetypes or the gameplay style are. They care about how many competitive tier one decks are there in this format, this format, and this format. And if it's like above five, they're like, okay, whatever. If it's above 10, they throw a party and get a cake. So if Historic was like mill, some tribal, some red blitz crap, some control until my deck runs out trash, an infinite loop like with Walking Ballista or something... And then Super Friends Hyper Control with just nothing but board wipes and planeswalkers. They'd be like, oh, look at the diversity. All these uh, are kind of balanced and, and, you know, you could play whatever you want. Cool. Great. Look at all the options. Yay. Diversity. Uh, the tribal one would be the only tolerable deck that anybody wants to play with that I named there. I pretty much just named every archetype everybody hates. And honestly, in my head, I had elves. So, eh. You know what? Maybe throw the tribal deck under the bus, too. I mean, imagine I said slivers, okay? You can't just write off tribal as a healthy thing. So I don't know if they've just admitted and went to, like, a defeatist attitude about, wow, we printed some overpowered crap and there's nothing we can do about it now. Oh, well, let's just live with it. In standard, let's let it rotate. In historic, oh, well, it'll just resemble modern oops. And they just try to put out fires with individual little bands left and right. Or if they sincerely think, uh, I don't care what people think about this deck, everybody's going to have their complaints about any deck. Uh, People just don't like losing. If they lose, they're going to blame the deck and say they hate it. Uh, Yeah, immature, stupid players who haven't been playing very long are going to have that opinion. You guys have seen me on stream. If I lose to a mill deck, there's going to be words. Uh, If I lose to something legitimate that I, I haven't commonly seen before, I'm like, that's interesting. That's a real deck. That was a real game that went to like turn nine, and I'm impressed by their deck building skills. I had fun playing it. There was some back and forth, and... They played better than me. I lied. That's rarely the case. They drew better than me. Or their deck just happened to be a really good matchup against mine and have a natural advantage against it. Whatever. You can't expect to win every game unless you're an immature, obnoxious 10-year-old who can't stand not winning. Actually, I should say 13. It's more of a testosterone thing. (laughs) We need more women in magic, damn it. Actually, my three-year-old nephew loses his shit if he loses at anything ever, so... I don't know, but it takes a mature, civil, level-headed, based player to be like, okay, I lost one game of Magic, cool, let me reassess, do I need to improve my deck, does it have a weak point, is there anything I need to do, or did I just lose the game because you can't win everything, and then move on. And then you've got the net deckers, where it's like, I copied this deck off the internet, and MGG Goldfish said this is the number one deck, and it's the top four in the last tournament, you're supposed to auto-win with this, and I spent money on this, and I was supposed to auto-win. The hardcore have-to-win net decking community, very, very well known for their maturity and civility. The funny thing is, whenever I see an angry comment, like a just ballistic, crazy, angry comment, first of all, I screenshot it to put it in my Discord and we all laugh at you, uh, but I usually check out their channel and who they're subscribed to, and it's like all the net deck channels. It's all the deck building, tier one tournament covering channels, and then me for some reason. Because I guess eventually they want the truth, but it's like the net deck starter pack of douchebags to subscribe to on the internet. It's amazing. And people are like, aren't you mad that like 5% of the community absolutely hates you and constantly rips on you? And I'm like, uh, I go out of my way to piss them off. So no, that means it's working. I'm happy that angry people are angry at me because they're wrong and I anger them on purpose. They are toxic members of the community that ruin the game with net decking and their stupid attitude and their immature, you know, toddler meltdowns when they don't win and when their deck gets banned. I have no respect for them, and the angrier they get, the better. Hopefully they have a stroke. I love the hate. Keep it coming, because I know exactly who it constantly comes from. Attention all net deckers. You're falling for it. And far left SJWs. I, I definitely go out of my way to piss those idiots off. So yeah, the intelligent, you know, normally more quiet on social media members of the community understand all this. I I am explaining it to the people who already get it. Especially my subscribers. You guys are smarter than the average, you know, magic community. Just look at, at, like, MTG, uh, what the hell is the name of that shit forum? I don't know, that really big forum where they, like, went bankrupt and sold out and whatever, and everybody's an asshole, including especially the moderators. And the, no, this is tier one, no, that's not tier one, this is tier one, no, this is tier one. That that old dick measuring bullshit section of the forum, boy, they, they just need to burn that section down, just hit the delete button. Um, I played 100 games with this in MTGO and I won 90 of them. It doesn't matter, it's not tier one because my favorite celebrity on Twitter didn't say it was. Boy, that forum is a circus. 
But when it came to Field of the Dead, as soon as they unsuspended it, people were like, you have got to be kidding me. I guess there were like a tiny percentage of people that are like, cool, I can go back to playing it again. Yay. But those are the people that don't care about anybody else's good time. They just want to win. They want an easy, stupid, dumb win. And, you know, it's the same people who probably were playing Goblin Rush because you could just play that completely brainless. It does take a little bit of skill to play Field of the Dead, but if you cold pass turn 10, you're going to win. So it's kind of brainless. I mean, a lot of people just want to download an auto-win deck, so they're like, cool, Field of the Dead is back, whatever. Now, And the funny thing is they never want to play against it. Did you ever notice that? When somebody has a cleaner, faster, more direct version of it, and they play a semi-mirror match and then lose, they, like, go ballistic. And then they search the internet for the updated deck list so that they can copy them, too, and, and be the king of their own little bubble again. I'm the best MTG player in the world in my own mind. Because I know how to press Control c and then the import button. And I've got mommy's credit card. But yeah, the backlash was real when people were like, when will this card ever be okay? So, to get back to my original point about unbanning anything ever, here's the logic behind it. Here, here's the sheer math, okay? I'm going to keep this really simple. There are probably about 3,000 cards in Historic or something absurd like that. What is the benefit versus the risk of adding one more card to it? And not even just in the card pool, most is filler, jank, unplayable, garbage, and some have, like, literally better versions. So you could trim it down to maybe, like, 500 playable cards. I don't know. So let's phrase it as, what's the point of adding one more deck archetype? One more, you know, the, the Field of the Dead deck back to the meta? Well, you take, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 decks, whatever, that are popular, and tier 1, 1. 1.5, something that people are playing, whatever, and winning with, and then you add one to it. I mean, if we were looking to, like, right after Our Devastation came out, I think maybe the set after that, too, there were two decks that people played. I would have taken an unban just to see a third deck. One unbanning could have made it into 50% more diverse. Now, three still isn't enough, and I don't want to see anything they banned then come back, so it's not a real solution, but in Wizards' minds, it is. They're like, oh, we're upping diversity, cool. Like, maybe it's a good time to come back because the power level of everything across the board went up basically 10% on some arbitrary scale, so now this deck would fit in and not overwhelm the entire field. So their strategy is diversity. My strategy is fun, enjoyable gameplay in any format. And balance power and diversity. Now, logically, how you get uh, high deck diversity is lower the power level of everything. Then you don't get a bunch of standout-ish decks that just are on a whole other level from anything anybody can come up with and build. Back in the day, like around the launch of Origins and post-rotation, um, you could build anything reasonably good and go to FNM and win with it or play online and win with it. There just really was nothing standoutishly amazing. There was a couple where it's like, okay, that's a good deck, and people played it, whatever, net decker's gonna net deck. But anything creative under it that was, you know, reasonably well built, tested in kind of an okay deck, you'd have a pretty good chance of beating them. Like even a 45% chance, which is enough to win two out of three regularly, especially if they make play errors and you don't, because then it, it goes past 50%. And the number one deciding factor of a Magic game, besides who goes first, because that's huge, is uh, the mulligan decisions. And net deckers are famous for just copying the deck and not knowing any of the math behind it or any of the strategy. They make dumb decisions, you make good decisions, usually deck builders know better than deck copiers because they know how their own deck works and they know how math works. And they will stomp them out. So we need to get back to that. Now, if you look at the astronomical power level of like even, you know, six months ago, let alone right now, like what deck could you possibly come up with that would beat Teamer Reclamation before it was banned. There, There isn't a deck. You, you can't beat it. It's too fast, too consistent, too much mana, too much card draw. It's just too much everything. It's card advantage mixed with more mana, mixed with better, you know, color options, a better sideboard, and better, more powerful cards. There's, there's nothing left in the card pool to compete with that. And if you look down the list, it's just broken card, broken card, broken card, broken card, broken card. Well, there you go. So it's, it's just a product of too many good cards all put together in one deck. They found the color combination of three colors, and that's it. That's the end of the format. Nothing can beat it, nothing can compete with it, nothing even comes close, and nothing stops it. You can't even resort to like, oh, here's that deck's weakness, I'm going to play its weakness. There was no weakness. So true deck diversity comes from less overpowered combination options. So if you power down the whole format and just print cards that are good, solid, interesting cards, or put hyper-powered cards at six mana cost or up and then don't allow ramp or free casting. Or like out of control, crazy, consistent turn two ramp, I mean. I mean I'm not saying remove the color green from the game. But yeah, remove the hyper consistent uh, mana fixing and all the rare lands and all that. Start powering them down, make them slower. 
make there be an actual penalty for running, you know, two color or three color, like a little bit of a, you know, one turn mana disadvantage penalty, which there absolutely is not now, or they just play around it if it exists. And then ta-da, you've got perfect deck diversity just from sheer logic, from math. That's just how the, the cookie crumbles. But Wizards has a brilliant strategy of power standard way up because then we can sell cards to modern and commander players. Whoopsies, we broke both of those formats and had to ban everything. Oopsies. If you want money, print staple reprints. Double Masters, Ultimate Masters, just do that once a year. There's your money. If you actually care about the format, then okay, Modern Horizons, try that again. It worked so well the first time, but try harder this time. Okay, there's your selling cards directly to modern players and obviously Commander because they're legal in Commander too. So they're, they're, do that. Like, keep it out of standard. They, they don't seem to understand that. But no, they decided to crank up the power level in standard and, oh, what do we get? A couple decks that can't be beaten because that's just what would naturally happen with just the numbers and probability and card combinations, wide open combo cards and, you know, pushed cards. That's just number theory, basically. It will happen every time consistently. But they haven't learned. And that's why, like I said, right now, if you wanted to fix standard, you got to ban about 30 or 40 cards because it's all the cards that are pushed way too far. It's not reasonable. They wouldn't even do that. But that's the only way to fix it. That wouldn't just be a temporary band-aid. Like I said, you could ban all the way back down to adventures, which they've basically done at this point. Like, look at the standard 2021 queue where we're down to four sets legal. They basically banned four entire sets for that format. And shocker, people are all playing morph. Just stack up a bunch of morph crap and remove all your creatures with that stupid flying hornet that needs to be banned immediately. Or people just ramp into Ugin because duh. Or people are back to playing adventure, overdraw card advantage, run them over. And just bounce everything back to hand and just win. Because they just, every time they blink, they draw three cards. Clover and that stupid John Candy looking innkeeper piece of shit. Both of those should be banned, honestly. The mechanic, the cards, the idea, everything about them are too powerful, too good, too consistent, and nothing can compete with it. So now we've got the same crap. So back in actual standard, they could have banned cards all the way down to when people were still playing adventures. And it would still be broken because the power level is too high. That's what Wizards needs to get about this. Because you can't just say, oh, we banned three cards, we banned four cards, look at the It doesn't do anything. Look at standard right now. It doesn't do anything. People are still playing ramp without reclamation. They've just resorted to crap they were playing nine months ago. It's, it doesn't fix anything. To permanently fix it, you need to power down the entire format. Or you need to start issuing bands out like Yu-Gi-Oh! Where there's like, here's, here's the entire eight and a half by 11 sheet of new bands. So that's what's at the root of all of this. And that's why nothing ever gets better. It's not that they don't ban aggressively enough. It's that they, it's inherently fundamentally broken from the get go. So back to the logic of, oh, well, let's up the, the top tier deck diversity by bringing back something from the past that might be an appropriate power level relative to how far we've power crept the format. The thing is though, people hated that deck. It won exactly the same way every time, usually. They've said they don't want turn four wins dominating the format because it's very oppressive um, and it just pushes out any other deck slower than that. They don't want infinite combos in the format because they just look bad, they're stupid, and they're inherently broken and they're not supposed to be part of magic. So they banned it. They just got rid of it. Same with uh, Amulet Bloom. It, it was very consistent, very boring, very non-interactive. It was boring to watch at a tournament on stream. Both of them were just bad decks. They were just boring. Now you compare that to Jund where they try and win with like big creatures and attacking and blocking and spells and like and, like playing actual real magic, like something that actually resembles the game Magic the Gathering. It's like, yeah, you got Tarmogoyf and shit. Yeah, cool. It's powerful. Whatever. Like that's, it's modern. Get over it. At least it plays magic differently. At least it plays a little bit differently every time and can adapt to what the other person's playing. They got to make important decisions about what to remove and when to swing and, you know, what to risk and that kind of stuff. It's at least interesting to play and interesting to watch. So bringing back something else that was banned for a very good reason is illogical. Now, let's step away from that exact example and just say in a general sense. Let's say a format is doing just fine. Like, it, it's standard, and they, they banned something when rotation happened because it was like, whoa, look at this. They banned it. And then they released a set, released a set, released a set, and, okay, now we've got a way bigger pool. By just sheer numbers, the, the power level went up. Should they unban the card from when there was only five sets legal when there's eight sets legal? Because they know that that deck would maybe be competitive and a good thing and they could up diversity. Let's say standard at the same time was an appropriate power level. So there's, you know, 15 decks, but they just look at it and they're like, well, this would be fine. I mean, why is this still banned? This would be fine. Like from the power level of the 15 most popular decks, we could make it 16. Why would we not? There's no reason to keep this banned. 
And that that's more of a modern thing, but that has been their strategy for stuff like Stoneforge Mystic. There's no like, oh, it's okay now. Stoneforge Mystic is just fine now. No, it's just modern got so power creep that they're like, well, there's no reason to keep it banned. Let's just bring it back. The deck that, that uh, Stoneforge Mystic played would be just fine in modern now. So with all the modern decks, if we chose tier one, tier one and a half, and like tier two, it's probably like 50 options realistically. Your benefit is you could maybe make it 51, maybe, or the the deck and the cards that you just banned would come back, dominate the way they did before, and you'd have to reban it. So you can potentially up the deck diversity by 2%. That That's the upside. That's the win here. Or it'll do absolutely nothing and fail, and you might as well have left it banned because nobody will play it. That's another option. That's another outcome. Or it'll come back in, you're wrong, it'll just dominate the way it did before, and for the exact same reasons that you banned it in the first place, and then you'll have a really, really not diverse meta. You'll actually kill the diversity, and the deck will take over again. Plus, if you banned it for being annoying, repetitive, and non-interactive, like Splinter Twin and uh, Amulet Bloom, even if it becomes 5% of the meta, nobody wants to play against that garbage. It's toxic. It's boring, repetitive, and stupid. Okay, nobody wants to play against this, so the fun level goes down the toilet, but the diversity goes up a little bit. And that's where me and Wizards differ. They would see that as a plus. They'd say, stop complaining about the deck, eh, whatever. Now, lately, in the last, like, probably 10 ban announcements, they've occasionally hinted that they're banning things because they're tedious, they're dumb, they're hated by the community, they're too slow. They just generate not fun games. People are complaining about, you know, one, seeing them too often, but okay, whatever. But then two, they just don't want to play against that style of deck. Like, they don't want to get 90% of their spells countered or blown up within one turn. It's just whether it has a high win rate or not, it's not a fun deck. They've actually used the word fun in some of the ban announcements. So they're starting to catch on compared to how they did things five years ago. So when it comes to unbanning Stoneforge Mystic, it was let's roll the dice and see what happens. So the benefit is a tiny sliver, just the tiniest little bit of exactly fair and balanced deck diversity. Or it'll do nothing and then you might as well have left it banned. Or it'll just dominate, people will hate it, it'll be a toxic deck and you just made the format worse. So there's almost nothing but downsides and the only upside is the tiniest little increase in deck diversity. And that's why I said if there's only like two or three decks dominating like standard, you might as well unban something and make it four because what the hell? I mean, I would just ban the, the, all the decks that are tier one. But they've never done a sweeping ban where they take out all of tier one. Except for their last ban announcement in standard. Although they didn't do anything about Red Rush, that was, in my opinion, Tier 1. So, guess what people are playing now? Hmm. Look at the last online uh, uh, stats for the last online tournament in Standard. It is comical. More than half of people are playing one deck. So, you fixed it, Wizards. And I think that's why they're like, well, instead of banning everything, let's just unleash something else and see if that ups diversity. So, in that case, it makes some amount of sense. It's not a true fix. If the format's broken, breaking it worse is rarely the thing, but you can have the illusion of, oh, look, there's more options now and more diversity. Well, when it comes to modern, where there already are a lot of options, the whole unbanning of Stoneforge Mystic, the risk is enormous and the benefit is almost non-existent. That's the point I was trying to make. So that's why things should never be unbanned just because, oh, well, the power level's a little different now. Now there's answers. Now there's different styles. Let's see what happens, which is kind of what they did with Field of the Dead. They just said, well, there's answers now. People can deal with it. Cool, let's throw it back in. And then people are like, I don't want to play against this non-interactive flooding shit. And then they're like, okay, fine, we'll reban it. And nobody's playing the answers because duh. I mean, it's it was the most bonehead mistake I've ever seen in a ban announcement. I, I would put unbanning Field of the Dead above banning Emrakul instead of Marvel, which is the most notorious ban mistake ever made. I don't know. Some of you would argue that not banning Hogak and banning like that other one dredge thing was was like worse, but... It's close. I'll give you that one. It's close. Oh, and by the way, never forget printing Hogak in the first place was the real mistake. So that's why, in my opinion, if something's banned, I don't care if you have all the reasons in the world to unban it. Don't do it. It's not worth the risk. It is. Ju it's all risk and little reward every time under every circumstance. Even if you're like, oh, it's an emergency patch to the diversity issue. It was banned for a reason. And nobody wants it back and nobody wants to play against it. it you're just going to piss off the players. The only benefit is you can look back a month later and be like, yes, the diversity went up a little bit. Now people are playing four broken decks instead of three. I feel so much better about myself. While the entire community is like, screw this game, and they're quitting left and right. I mean, Arena has lost more than 50% of its players. They're just so sick of this trash. And a lot of people move from standard to historic and then, oh, let's unban Field of the Dead. And then that's all I see when I play against it. Or I mean, when I play in that queue. It's like every other deck. It's ridiculous. Eventually, the number of people running it went down because they all leveled out of Diamond. <laughs> 
So I just stopped seeing them. And I'm like, oh, problem solved. But yeah, not really. So yeah, this this was just unbelievably stupid. And the fact that they're trying to blame, oh, new cards. It was new cards. That's what did it. It was all Cultivate's problem. Shut up, wizards. Nobody believes your bullshit, okay? So to reiterate, in today's fair and balanced ban decision uh, lesson, the root of the entire problem is overpowered shit, printing pushed cards, and then, oh, what happened? How did this happen? That's how it happened. If you want to solve everything, you don't solve it with bans. You solve it with printing the cards and designing and playtesting them in the first place. That is the solution. It always has been. When it comes to bans, you should never unban anything ever because it's all risk, no reward, basically. Unless you're going to use it as a band-aid for an emergency diversity fix. And even then, that's not a healthy step for the game. It's still going to piss everybody off. And also, did I mention that the risk of you looking like an idiot is extremely high if you ban something, unban it, then reban it very shortly after because that proves that you were wrong multiple times, actually. So every single stage of that Wizards is screwing up right now, which is why the game is so unbelievably unfixably terrible. It's going to take years to undo this, and Historic is beyond all fixing because of Anthology. So this ban announcement has been brought to you by the Carrots in My Garden. I just pulled a couple up, and my god, they're like 18 inches, which is good because last year most of my carrots were pathetic. They weren't even big enough to eat. Turns out you really shouldn't overcrowd them, and if you do, you really should thin them out. But I improved the soil, and like, damn, man, we're, we're going half carrots next year, because, like, <laughs> pests and shit can't get to them. So I'm going to go cut up and cook those carrots. Oh, by the way, one thing I totally neglected to mention this entire time is, um, they didn't do shit to solve the goblin problem. So Historic is still going to be an absolute joke. They think an unbeatable, like, turn 10 plus deck is the reason people are playing goblins? No, they're playing goblins because they win on turn 4 with it. So they didn't fix shit, and about... Eh, a couple weeks to a month from now, they're going to have to ban a goblin, or two, or three, or four, or all of them. I don't care. Just do something about it. I don't give a shit, wizards. And you know what? Take elves with you, too. I, I hate all tribals in Historic right now. I don't care what they are. I hate them all. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.